The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Do you like riddles? Of course you do. Give me a good riddle that seems to defy solution and I'll settle down happily to unravel it like, uh, well, like a, a cat with a ball of twine. And like the cat, I usually succeed in making a tangled mess of it. But untangling a mystery, finding the answer to the riddle is fun. Unless, of course, you happen to be involved in it personally, and your life depends on finding a fast solution, like Rachel James. Suicide, Lieutenant Forbes. Mr. Carson committed suicide. No, Mrs. James. He was murdered. That's impossible. Why impossible? Because he was the only one in his room. The windows were locked on the inside, and the door was locked on the inside. If Mr. Carson was murdered... How did the murderer escape? Frankly, Mrs. James, I don't know. Well, I do. The answer is obvious. Suicide. Well, the answer is anything but obvious. Because it was murder. Our mystery drama... Key to Murder was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Mercedes McCambridge. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The most important tools you buy... might as well come right out and say it. I'm no Sherlock Holmes. Are you? Well, whether you are or not, here's your chance to match wits with Police Lieutenant Michael Forbes. Mike to you. Luckily, you have nothing to lose. Mike had everything to lose. The life of the woman he had come to love. The story begins in a certain old four-story brownstone in a certain large city on a certain cold and wintry day. In the rather stuffy Victorian living room, Rachel James and her closest friend, Minerva Hall, are having a much-needed cup of tea. Another cup, Rachel? Oh, I guess so, Minerva. Might as well enjoy it while I can still afford it. Oh, come on now. Things aren't that bad. Just because two of your rumors packed up and left. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Parker's making noises about doing the same thing. I don't know that I want to go on living in a boarding house where there's been a suicide. That's what she told me this morning. And it's always darkest before the dawn, Rachel. And Minerva, I... Minerva, please. This is no time for one of your life can be beautiful proverbs. I'm in a real blockbuster of a bind. You know as well as I do that I've gone through an awful lot since I inherited this rooming house from Aunt Hattie. I know it hasn't been easy for you. Easy? What with inflation and taxes and mortgage payments and skyrocketing fuel bills and I don't know what all, I just barely managed to keep my head above water. And now with two boarders gone, three rooms empty, counting poor Mr. Carson... I don't know how I'll make ends meet. I just don't know. One thing you can do is stop worrying. We'll get by somehow. We? If worse comes to worse, you can always sell the place. And I've got my job at Gibbon Real Estate. <laughs> don't look at me like that, Rachel. After all, I am your oldest and closest friend. Oh, my dear Minerva, let's face that. You just get by as it is on what they pay you as a clerk. And there's... Well... I don't like to mention... I know. My mother. If it weren't for you footing the bills, I'd never be able to keep her in that sanitarium in Cleveland. Well, that's another problem to worry about. What happens to her if I go broke? Well, she is really not your responsibility. No, but she is. She's your mother. I couldn't let anything happen to her any more than I could let anything happen to you. I... 
I got somebody at the door. Maybe someone who wants to rent a room. Yes. Miss James? Yes. And Lieutenant Mike Forbes? Homicide? Lieutenant? Homicide? You mean the police? Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, uh, well, won't you come in? Uh, it's a terribly cold day, isn't it? No, yeah, cold, windy. I walked over from the precinct station. It was just a couple blocks. The wind darn near blew this pipe of mine right out of my mouth. <laughs> I see you held on to it. Go. You object to pipe smoking, Miss James? I mean, if you do... Oh, I'll no, start. no, that's, uh, quite all right. Well, now, Lieutenant, I have one or two rooms I think you might like. There's one on the fourth floor that's very spacious. It overlooks the garden in the back. It's very quiet. So, Miss James, I'm not here to rent a room. I'm investigating the death of Harold Carson. Oh. Will you come into the living room, then? Uh, Minerva, this is Lieutenant Forbes. Of the police. Uh, my friend, Miss Minerva Hall. How do you do? I do. Won't you sit down, Lieutenant? Oh, thank you. Well, now. Uh, you say you're investigating poor Mr. Carson's suicide? Uh, yes, ma'am. The fact of the matter is, it wasn't suicide. Not suicide? No, ma'am. Harold Carson was murdered. Murdered? Oh, but that's not possible. Hmm? Why isn't it? Well... You know how he was found, don't you? I mean, don't the police make out reports and things? Oh, I read the dope sheet, all right. Well, then you know he was found on the floor with his head right next to the gas heater and all the jets turned on full. Yeah, I know, but... Uh... Minerva here and I smelled the gas and we traced it to Mr. Carson's room and we called to him. But he didn't answer and then we tried to open the door. But it was locked on the inside. So Min and I had to break it in. And thank heaven she was here because I'd never have been able to do it alone. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. And there he I, was, uh, the poor man. He was dead. A suicide. Ma'am, I, I I hate to disagree with you, but Mr. Carson was murdered. It looked like suicide, yes. But it was meant to look like suicide. But the autopsy report from the medical examiner's office states that the old man was first rendered unconscious by a blow to the head. And that death by asphyxiation, uh, gas, followed. Someone knocked him out and then turned on the gas? Yes. But he, he, he couldn't have been murdered. If he was, what happened to the murderer? What do you mean? Well, how did he get out of the room? The windows and door were locked on the inside. No, no, that couldn't be. L Lieutenant, the key was in the door lock on the inside. This is an old brownstone with old doors, the kind that have those big keys, you know. And there's only one key to each room. Uh, you don't have duplicates? No, and even if I or someone did have a duplicate, you can't unlock the door from the outside without pushing the other key out of the lock. We'd have found it on the floor, not in the lock. Mm hmm. Well, that's interesting. Very. Oh, that match. Put it off. Mm, just read lighting. No, put off the match. Mm. I smell gas. Or I think I do. Oh, not again. Not again. You're right. I smell it now. It seems to be coming from... Yes, it is. It's from upstairs. All right, here. I'll go first. Oh, if it's another... It is and it can be. Lightning never strikes twice in the same... Oh, man. <laughs> smell is strong. Very strong here on the third floor. Yeah. Coming from this room. Mrs. Parker. Open up. Open up in there. Break it in. Break it in. <laughs> Mrs. Parker. Oh, Mrs. Parker. No. Oh, no. Open the window. Oh. Let me. <laughs> Lock from the inside. <laughs> Door lock on the inside, too. Key in the lock. Mrs. Parker. Oh, let's get her to the window. Fresh air. No, no. Don't bother. She's dead. But maybe if we can get some air into her lungs. It won't. Cure a broken neck. How can you can see the way it's twisted, Miss Hall? It's broken, all right. Then she's been murdered too. Yes, Miss James. She's been murdered too. Hello, 
Hello. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, just a minute. For you, Lieutenant. Oh, thank you, Miss Hames. You? Well, I've questioned all but one border inspector, Mars. A guy named Whitman. No, no, no. I'll, I'll stick here. It's just five o'clock, and Miss James says she gets home promptly at five every day. Yeah, well, okay. Okay, I'll see you in your office. You look pretty beat, Miss James. Why don't you go drive? Lie down for a while. You didn't rest. I need, Lieutenant. It's just a little peace of mind. Yeah. Yes, so. Two murders in your house in less than 36 hours. And a wrecked livelihood. Two more boarders, after you questioned them, told me that they were moving out. And nobody is going to move in. You can be sure of that. Things kind of rough, huh? Oh, you don't know the half of it. Mm Mm-hmm. I haven't seen your husband around. You a widow, maybe? I'm divorced. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you needn't be. He was a drunk. I put up with that for years. I would have gone on, I guess, except that uh, he started to cheat on me. There was another woman. I never found out who she was, but I... Oh, I guess this is Whitman, though. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, uh, Mr. Whitman, uh, will you come in here, please? If it's the... Uh, you found two touchdown passes. The last observation you make, Jack, is the key. He hasn't been sacked. And again, I reiterate... This is Lieutenant Forbes of Homicide... And according to him, Mr. Carson didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. And then just a couple of hours ago... Uh, Let me handle this, Miss James. Sit down, Mr. Whitman. John C. Whitman, right? Yeah, but what happened a couple of hours ago? I'll ask questions. Well, you don't understand. I'm a newspaper reporter. Daily Globe. Well, not exactly. I want to be a reporter. And I need a break, you know. I keep looking for a break, and if there's been another suicide here, or... or, uh, Wait, you said murder. There's been another death. Yes. Miss James has filled me in on you pretty much, so just answer me a couple of questions now. Sure, sure, sure. You work at the Daily Globe, 8 to 4.30, right? That's right, eight-hour day, half-hour for lunch. Now, now... Miss James tells me you always leave promptly at 7.30 in the morning, but today you didn't leave until 1 in the afternoon. Well, uh, yeah, I was sort of off my feet. I called in sick. Yeah, on the day Mr. Carson met his death, on that day you called in sick too, didn't you? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, what are you getting at, Lieutenant? Just routine questions, Mr. Whitman. Uh, how well do you know Mrs. Parker? Mrs. Parker? Did something happen to her? Is that what this is all about? How well did you know? Oh, just to say hello to that's all. How well did you know Mr. Carson? Same. Wish I'd known him better. If I'd known him better, I might have written a story my editor would have printed. But he didn't. Into the scrap basket. Says it wasn't good enough. Uh, Mr. Whitman wrote an account of what happened the other day. Well, thank you, Mrs. James. I assumed as much. You're welcome, Lieutenant Forrest. Oh, well... Thanks, Mr. Whitman. Yeah, now, about Mrs. Parker. What happened? I could get my teeth into one good story. A scoop, you know. Listen, the city editor would make me a reporter, maybe. So, Mrs. Parker, what happened? Uh, Mrs. James will tell you, or you can read it in the evening edition. One suspect, Lieutenant. Is that all? Yes, Inspector. Whitman. 32 years old been in newspaper work since he graduated from journalism school. Dying to be a reporter and hasn't made it in all these years. He's hot for a scoop. Well, it struck me he could maybe be making his own scoop. Well, if he made this one, how come he didn't cash in on it? You checked his city editor. He told you Whitman never said a word about Mrs. Parker's murder. Yeah. Yeah, well, have a look at this dope sheet. Uh... Harold Carson withdrew his life savings from the bank, $4,300, the day before he was murdered. Ah, read on, Lieutenant. Mrs. Parker withdrew her life savings yesterday. 
And not a dollar of that money, cold cash, was found in Carson's room or Parker's. You find out who's clever enough to pull this locked door trick. Who was clever enough to get Carson and Parker to withdraw every cent they had in the world. And you'll have your murderer. In fact, I may have your murderer for you. I give Rachel James. Mrs. Rachel James. <laughs> no, no, not her. Listen, Inspector, she's one of the nicest women I've ever met. She's also a convicted felon, Lieutenant. What? Back in 65, she served six months for theft. The look on Lieutenant Mike Forbes' face reveals not only shock, but something else. I don't know what it is myself. Maybe... Well, no. It couldn't be that. He's only known Rachel James a few hours at most. And I... Well, I never believed much in love at first sight. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out when I return for Act Two. You know how... How does a murderer, or anyone else that comes to that, get out of a room when all exits, windows and doors, have been locked? from inside. Impossible? No. After all, whoever murdered old Harold Carson and Mrs. Parker and tried to make their deaths look like suicide must have accomplished what only seems impossible. Up to this point, I've been unable to figure it out. And perhaps you have too. So let's join Lieutenant Mike Forbes in the living room of that old four-story brownstone as he tries getting to the bottom of things. Lieutenant... Are you accusing me of murdering Mr. Carson and Mrs. Parker? No, Mrs. James. Then why did you come here to ask her if she'd ever been convicted of theft? Now, Miss Hall, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk with Mrs. James alone. I do mind. Rachel's my friend, my inseparable friend. Whatever you have to say, you can say in front of me. Do as he says, Mim. I'll be all right. Well, if you need me, I won't be far off. Uh, Miss James, I'm sorry if I'm causing you an embarrassment, but two murders have been committed in this house, and I've got to get at the truth of things. I'm ruined, Lieutenant. That bad? It couldn't be worse. I'm afraid I'm going to have to sell, whether I want to or not. Well, at least you get a good price. Land values in this area are high. Gone up, too, since they built that office complex and shopping mall over on 8th. Yeah, but, uh, look, I've, I've got to ask you these questions, Miss James, and it'll be in your best interest to answer them. Uh, now then, you did serve a six-month sentence for theft, didn't you? Yes. And I suppose that, uh... Makes me a murder suspect right there. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I just have to check out everybody's own. Now, about that theft. Were you guilty? No. It was Miss Hall? No. But it could have looked as if she was. And, and, and... Oh. You know. You've known all along. Well, like I said, I've been checking. Well, if you knew, why did you bother to ask? To see how you'd react? Hmm. You reacted fine. Well, thank you. And I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Uh, getting back to the theft, uh, your friend, Miss Hall... Well, her boss had given her $900 in cash to put in the bank. Is that right? Well, never mind. I know it's right. You came to the office to go to lunch with her and waited for her at her desk while she was in the ladies' room. When she came back, she opened her desk drawer to get the envelope with the money in it. And it was gone. Now, you just told me you weren't guilty. Is that so? Why'd you plead guilty? 
Well, why? To protect me, Lieutenant. Yes, I've been listening outside the door just in case you got too rough with Rachel. Oh, Min. You might as well know, Lieutenant. You probably know anyway. I stole that money. Min! No, it's got to come out now. My mother came down ill, very ill, and I needed money. When my boss gave me that $900, well, the temptation was too big for me. It was a, a stupid thing to do, especially since I was sure to be suspected, as I was. But that's when, when this, this wonderful woman here stepped forward and said she'd done it. When you had to be with your mother, she needed you. And I was divorced and living alone. Oh, you sacrificed yourself for me, Rachel. And I'll never forget it. Someday I'll get the chance to repay you. Yeah, well, I'll uh, move along now. And thank you for being so frank and open with me about the theft of that money. You knew anyway. No. No, Miss Hall. I didn't know. as I see it, Lieutenant. You've got three suspects now. Uh, three, Inspector? Jack Whitman, Minerva Hall, Rachel James. Rachel? Uh, Miss James, you can eliminate her. She didn't do it. Well, you seem awfully sure of that. What makes you so sure? Well, I, I, well, I, I just can't imagine her killing anyone. No, she's, she's a very decent sort. Generous. Sympathetic. Well, anyhow, that's the picture I get from the boarders I talk to and my own observation. Attractive to them. Meaning what, Inspector? Well, don't let any interest you may be developing in Rachel James put blinders on you. Now, about this Miss Hall, this close friend of Mrs. James, you say she admitted stealing that $900 and letting Mrs. James take the rap for her? Yeah, but she's no common thief, Inspector. No, it's the Whitman guy who interests me. I talked to his editor at the Daily Globe. James Whitman has been knocking himself out to get to be a reporter for years, but just hasn't got what it takes. He fools himself into thinking all he needs is a break. And you figure maybe he's making his own breaks with these murders. That could be. The more I think about it, Lieutenant, the more it seems to me crack in this case depends on finding the answer to those locked rooms. I couldn't agree more. Check the doors and the windows. They're solid. No gimmicks. <laughs> You'll laugh, but I even check for secret panels. <laughs> yeah, well, it's an old brownstone, you know. You never know what you might find, but no dice. Well, keep after it. There's an answer. Find it. Yeah. I got a feeling I better find it fast. Why? I don't know. Just one of those feelings you get. Feeling that tells me there could be another murder. Rachel, this is Mr. Gibbon. Arthur Gibbon, my boss. Mr. Gibbon, Rachel James. Ah, it's a pleasure, Miss James. Oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Gibbon? Uh, thank you. Well, uh, Miss Hall has told me of your situation here. Says that you talked to her about selling your house and as I understand it, uh, two murders have been committed in this house. Most of your boarders have moved out because of them. And, well, the house has gotten itself a bad name. Hmm? That's unfortunate. It's most unfortunate. Brings its value down, you know. Yes, I guess so. Hmm. Uh, tell me, Miss James, uh, any idea what your house is worth? Well, uh, no, not really. I was thinking you might make me an offer. Well, yes, yes, I could, I could. Uh, under the circumstances, the best I can do, the very best, would be uh, $50,000. Oh! You're not serious, Mr. Gibbon. Well, I'm afraid I am. Well, the land alone is worth more than that. Much more. Yes, but the bad name... Mr. Is... Gibbon, the house has a bad name, so far as running rooms to borders is concerned. But if you are the businessman Minerva's always told me you are, you wouldn't be buying the house. You'd be buying the land to tear the house down. 
and put up an office building or something. Uh, well, yes, that's, that's true enough. But, uh, well, the land isn't as valuable as I gather you think it is. And as I understand it, you have no option but to sell. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gibbon, but your offer is much too low. I guess the thing for me to do is to, uh, get bids or whatever they're called on the property and, uh, take the highest. Well, it's your house, your land, you can do as you wish. But I ought to tell you, you're making a mistake. As I said, land values are down. So if you change your mind, Mr. James, you let me know, huh? My office will still stand. No, 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 that's not happening, Nerva. I'll see myself out. Oh, uh, you won't forget about the deed. The deed? Yeah, the ones I want to work on tonight. Oh, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, I'll see you in the office then at seven. At seven. I'll be there. Goodbye, Mr. James. I could be wrong, Rachel, but I don't know. $50,000 seems like a good offer to me. No, well, you could be right. But I'll shop around. No. Yes, no other way, man. Then there's no other way, Art, and the hell with it. Well, now you listen to me, baby. Oh, no, Art, no. I've gone as far as I'm going to go. This is no time to chicken out. I never bargained for killing Rachel. I didn't either. But how was I to know she isn't the... Naive pushover, you told me, Juan. Oh, it's that police lieutenant, Ford. What do you mean? Well, there's a change in Rachel, a subtle change. I noticed it right after she met Forbes. Well, I still don't get the change. Neither do I. All I know is there's a man in her life again. For the first time in years. Well, all right, all right. so there's a change in her. There's a million dollars. No, I cannot it. kill Rachel. <laughs> Carson and Parker, yes, they meant nothing to me, nothing. I even conned them into taking their life savings out of the bank, suckers. But to kill Rachel, no, Art, no, I can't do it. You'll do it. You've got to. I won't. You were willing enough to wreck the boarding house business, willing enough so I could move in and grab that property for ten cents on the dollar. Taking her money is one thing, taking her life... No, no, I, I, I guess there's some little spark of decency left in me. <laughs> decency? You, you, you can talk about decency? Conning her all these years, sucking her dry, like those monthly handouts to keep your dear mama in the sanitarium? Your dear mama who died years ago? Money is one thing. Money is everything. But Alex might just as well be dead. Now you listen. I didn't set this whole thing up. I didn't explain the locked door trick and everything. The no, locked door trick that didn't work. The cops found out it was murder, not suicide. Thanks to you, not me. If you'd suffocate Carson and Parker like I told you... I couldn't do it. It was just... It was too horrible that way. Okay, okay. So you bashed one on the skull and broke the neck of the other. Accidentally. Accidentally. Deliberately. You did it. And now you do it to Rachel James. I don't care either. Do it. No. What are you doing? Calling the police. What for? To tip them off on how Carson was murdered. And Parker? No. You as guilty as I am. Ah, but not as involved. In fact, I'm not involved at all, man. I've seen to that. Give me the phone. Elsie, swine. Tonight, man. Killer. Tonight. Well, a spark of decency may still flicker in the Nerva Hall soul, but clearly may still flicker in the Nerva Hall soul, but clearly it's been thoroughly quenched 
by Mr. Arthur Gibbons. Or has it? We'll see. We'll also see how someone can walk out of a room locked on the inside when I return for Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago. baffling thing, human emotion. Even the most skilled psychiatrists, I'm told, have trouble unraveling the tangled skeins of motivation which drive us to do one thing or another. I'm thinking of Minerva Hall, who, though she murdered Mr. Carson and Mrs. Parker, is repelled by the prospect of murdering Rachel James. Makes sense, I guess. After all, they've had a close relationship for years. And as for Rachel, sensing that Mike Forbes is something to lean on, somebody who can give her some protection, perhaps even shield her against the world she's finding it more and more difficult to cope with, well, let's see. Sit down, Lieutenant. Cup of tea. Uh, no, 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 thanks, Miss James. It's a cold day. Very cold. I thought you might like something to warm you up. Well, I, uh, I could use something... (laughs) You mean something stronger than tea. <laughs> but you're on duty. Well, not officially. Not officially, I'm not. Well, Scott? Yeah. A uh, bourbon, then. Rye, actually. Oh, dear, I don't think I... Well, I might. Look. Lieutenant, if you're not on duty, officially, why are you here? Oh, that, uh, well, uh, two reasons... One is your friend's mother. You know about her mother? Yeah. Is it a fact you've been helping to support Miss Hall's mother in the sanitarium in Cleveland? Oh, yes. Yeah. But how did you know? Oh, there's lots of ways. Funny thing about police work. You start digging into one thing and you come up with ten other things. Oh, here you are. Oh, thank you. And, uh, if, if you'd like to smoke your pipe. Oh, well, thanks. Hey, to tell you the truth, I, uh, yeah, I bought a new one. A new pipe? Well, the old one, and, yeah, I guess it was getting kind of rank. <laughs> <laughs> Try a new kind of tobacco, too. <laughs> so if you really don't mind. No, uh, no, no, no. Huh? You go right ahead. Oh, about men's mother. Money has always been tight with men, and I've just, uh, Helped out where I could, that's all. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let me see. What, um... What is it you, um... Uh, like about Miss Hall so much? Hmm? What makes her such a good friend? Well, that's a funny question, Lieutenant. I'd do anything for men, and she'd do anything for me. It's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said you had another reason for coming to see me. Yeah. Yes. What is it? <laughs> well. You. Now, there. Uh, wait a minute. Don't, don't get me wrong, Miss James. Uh, Rachel. I... I don't know how to put this exactly, but, uh, well, it, it, it's like this. I, oh, hang it all, Rachel. I like you. Yeah. Well, I, uh, like you too, Lieutenant. You do? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, women, they, they scare me. Always have. But not you, though. Mm-hmm. You, well, you, you know what I mean? Uh, I think I do, yes. Come in. Oh, Minerva. Feeling better? Oh, sure. I just thought I'd lie down for a while. Brought you a cup of broth. Good night. Oh, thank you. That's very thoughtful of you. This bedroom of mine always has been chilly, even with the gas heater going. Yeah, 
still here. This will warm you up. Mm-hmm. So you did the town with Lieutenant Forbes last night, did you? Uh-huh. It was a marvelous time. Just to be taken out again would have been fun, but Mike... He's a wonderful man. <laughs> you better be careful. You know what they say. Marry and haste, repent and leave. Oh, man, who said anything about marrying? Your eyes and that look on your face. That's what says... Oh, nonsense. There's no thought of marriage at all. We hardly know each other. Oh. I sleep here than I thought. I better start waking up. I have an appointment at Metropolitan Realty at 11 this morning. About the house and land? Oh, and think that broth while it's hot. Yeah. And I've got appointments at a couple of other real estate firms this afternoon, too. It's going to be able to get those bids I mentioned. Baby. You won't improve on the offer Mr. Gibbons made, Rachel. Well, maybe not. Oh, good heavens. I can't be this sleepy. Yes. Yes, Rachel, you can. Oh, nonsense. <sighs> I didn't get much sleep, that's for sure, but... Oh, what in the world? Oh, you dropped your cup and softer. Oh, I don't understand. How could I... You're... You're drugged, Rachel. Huh? Sleeping pills in your bra. Enough to knock you out fast. Sleeping pills... Yeah. What is this? I don't want to do this, Rachel, but I, I got no choice. No choice? It's your neck or mine. It was Art's idea. Art given to <sighs> We're lovers, Rachel. Well, we were. Oh, and, and you, he, how could you do this? How could you? Mm. Rachel. Rachel. <sighs> Goodbye, Rachel. <laughs> Coming. Oh, Lieutenant Forbes. Miss Hall. Uh, Miss James in? Oh, yes, but she's lying down. I <laughs> hear you two were painted the town together last night, huh? Oh, I wouldn't say painted it exactly. Enjoyed ourselves. So... Oh, Mr. Whitman, isn't it? Yeah, how are you, Lieutenant? Okay. Yeah, it's quite a bundle of laundry you got there. Yeah, always go out and pick it up Saturday morning. My day off. Well, see ya. Um, I, I'll i tell Mrs. James you drop by, Lieutenant. Oh, well, uh, maybe she'll be up before I go. I really dropped by to see you, Miss Hall. Me? About what? Well, one or two things. Your mother, for one. My mother? Yes. Yeah. According to my information, Rachel's been supporting her in that Cleveland sanitarium for years, giving you a monthly check for just that purpose. Oh, what of it? I checked with the sanitarium. They told me your mother died four years ago. Yeah. What? What? I smell gas up here, Lieutenant Miss Hall. Hey, let's get up there. It's coming from Mrs. James' room. Mrs. James' room right there. Oh, no. It's locked. Rachel? Rachel! Get out of the way. Rachel! Ah. Rachel! Whitman, get that window open. <laughs> yeah, okay. Rachel! Rachel! Window stop. Break it. Run. Lieutenant. No, no, no. Thank God, no. We got here in time. Get into the window. Now breathe, Rachel. And you, Miss Hall. Minerva, stay right where you are. Oh, I I'm just going down. Stay where you are. You're under arrest for murder. Murder? Arrest? What are you talking about? You know damn well what I'm talking what about. What are you out of your mind? Here, you're not making any sense. We find Rachel on the floor by the gas heater. The door locked on the inside. Yeah, Lieutenant, the key is in lock. And you accuse me of murder? Murder one. And I'll make it stick, Miss Hall. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I take my hat off to you, Rachel. You sure know how to boil a stick. 
I'm glad you enjoyed it, Mike. I will never understand how men could have done to me what she did. Well, it's easy enough to understand for a cop it is now. I meet all kinds of generous, greedy, those you can trust, those you can't. What makes some one way and some another, well, that I will never understand. People, you can't figure them out. You figured out the mystery of the locked room fast enough. Oh, that, well, that didn't take much. If Minerva had been smart, she'd have gotten away with it. I mean, if she'd used sleeping pills on Carson and Mrs. Parker the way she did on you, then maybe I'd have bought the suicide bit. But Carson and Mrs. Parker were obviously murdered. So the murderer couldn't have gotten out of their rooms, leaving them locked on the inside. It's impossible, of course. So, I had to keep looking for the possible. In other words, how did the murderer make it look as if each door had been locked on the inside? when actually the murderer had left the room and locked the door from the outside. And the answer when you found it was so simple. Yep. And once you found it, you knew that the murderer had to be Minerva. Had to be. The murderer had to be present when those doors were broken in. You and she broke into Carson's room. And she was there when the three of us, her, you, me... Broke into Mrs. Potter's. And all men did was to take advantage of the confusion. Mm -hmm. And slip the key, which, of course, she kept with her, into the lock on the inside. As simple as that. Well, you may call it simple. But I think it was a marvelous piece of deduction. For which you deserve more steak and potatoes. Oh, no. Oh, no, I couldn't. I'm full up. I, uh... Would like to smoke my pipe, though. That's okay with you? You better know that it is. And it always will be. Mike. As simple as that, the murderer locked the door on the outside and then, breaking in later, simply slipped the key into the lock on the inside. Simple? I think it's ingenious. I would never have thought of it. Would you? I'll be back shortly. Hi, I'm Susan Anton. Fitness that feels good by day needs firmness that feels good by night. That's why you'll love the Serta Perfect Sleeper. Luxurious top comfort plus deep inner support. You get both with every perfect sleeper. So remember, be a perfect sleeper. Try a perfect sleeper, perfect. It's a healthy investment in yourself. The boy next door is a doctor and he's single. My daughter, what a girl, she's single too. I'll invite him for some donuts and my coffee. Maxwell House, I'm leaving it up to you. Maxwell House, it's a good moment. Maxwell House, good coffee. Good to the last drop. Maxwell House. Get together with the great taste of Maxwell House coffee. Coffee you can count on. Good to the last drop, Maxwell House. You'll be glad to know that Mike and Rachel are married now with two nice kids. And they live in Rachel's brownstone house. Sentimental attachment, I guess. Mike's made captain. And, oh, yes, he's got a collection of pipes now. Eight duties. Each bought on the anniversary of the day he saved Rachel's life. Bought by Rachel. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Mary Jane Higby, Robert Dryden, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I know you saw at me. What kind of a chump do you take me for? Oh, look, look, I, I'm sorry about the accident, but you know I didn't mean it. I, and besides, you know, you and me, well, we used to like each other. What are you talking about? Look, look I was the best safe cracker in the city, and you was the smartest detective on the force. You was out to get me, and I was out to beat you. 
But there was nothing personal in it, huh? Each one of us was only doing his thing. Hey, man, that's why you got to get me out of this. Why should I? Because you know I didn't kill him. I don't know anything of the kind. Oh, look me in... Uh, I was going to say look me in the eye and say that, but I can't because you can't. Oh, you know I'm not a killer, and you know that I didn't kill him. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.